Hello, welcome back to Suburban Hunt 365. I'm DJ. We are back in the reloading room again today. This is actually part two of our Savage 24E. In this video, we're going to take apart the actual receiver, all the springs for the hammer, the trigger, and everything inside there. So if you're looking for uh, the ejectors or the forearm, uh, that's going to be in part one of the video. So if, you, if you're looking for those, check it out. Links above me here. Uh, but the receiver, that's pretty complicated. So let's get started. All right, now we're ready for the receiver. All right, this is where the fun begins. Because as you can see, there are all sorts of springs and pieces and things that move. I mean, I mean, all kinds of stuff in here. So you definitely want to make sure you keep the right parts with the right parts, the springs with the right springs. And uh, I highly recommend that as you take this apart, and I granted you will have this video to refer back to, but I highly recommend you take pictures as you go to help remember what it is you did to be able to put it back. At least be able to look and see what it looked like when it was in the right spot. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of tension off this uh, barrel brake lever here. Okay, so as you can see there are two springs on either side we're talking about right here. So there's two springs, one here and one here on both sides, right? So this spring on this side actually comes around and is like a U around that uh, screw there. So but this one right here just sets in place. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and take a flathead screwdriver, stick it underneath. Let me zoom in here, make it a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm going to stick it underneath this spring here, put your thumb up twist it and pop that spring out okay i'm not gonna lie to you this is kind of a bear to put back in but it's easy to take out so leaving this together go ahead and put that to the side all right now that we have that spring out of the way now what we're gonna do is there's a screw that's holding on to this thumb here so you can push up on that a little bit take your flathead screwdriver getting it as straight as you can putting pressure on the lever here twist that around it's kind of a bear to get to but once you get started mine's pretty simple to get out if yours is a bear then you may have to take a different route but take this screw out of here and it'll fall in between your spring like so put that to the side now this whole thing will slide up and out but remember this is under spring tension so what I would do is just take your fingers kind of hold the spring down and then work this up and out just like so just putting that to the side now remember this guy here this little cup of a piece that goes towards the rear okay so as it's sitting in here it sets like this okay that's how it sits down inside there okay so you can put that in there like such get it out of the way now you can pull this spring up and out like so and remember this guy goes like this okay so it fits around that screw like that and that's how that goes in okay set that to the side all right now that we got all that out of the way this connector piece is not ready to come out yet so you have your pin here for the hammer and this one for your barrel catch here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drive this pin out. Now remember, this is still under spring tension. So when you punch that through, make sure to leave your punch in so that way it holds on to that pressure until you're ready to pull it back out. Right. as you can see our pin is there so we're almost out of there not quite out all right so we're gonna get a little bit longer punch here go ahead and finish that out and as you can see as soon as it cleared that pushed forward so that's why I'm saying have that punch still in place that way it holds everything it doesn't shoot over all over the place all right so now that pin is out far enough past that we'll go ahead and work this out like such this is your hammer pin so now we're going to go ahead and pull back a little bit on the spring here and pull your punch out just like such. 
All right, now your connector arm is ready to come out. But first, as you saw, you need to pull up on the hammer and then your hammer will come out. So there's your hammer. So push the pin all the way through, lift up on your hammer, get your hammer out of the way, set that to the side. Now your hammer spring is ready to go. Okay, these do come apart here. Okay, let's take that out. Pull this, I'm trying to pull it out the front, but it wouldn't want to play well with me. All right, so pull that out like such. Set that to the side. Now your connector piece is almost ready to come out. And you'll see when we come in there that there is a pin that holds the connector piece on to this. So now what we gotta do is go ahead and do the barrel catch. So the last pin you got. Pop that through and out. Oop, got off camera there, sorry. Got off frame. So that comes out, set that to the side. Go ahead and pull your punch out. And now this guy will actually go and it'll come out. So as I said a minute ago, there's actually a pin holding these together. So that's what this looks like inside there. So let's go ahead and break that down real quick. Take your punch, simple pin here. All right, now that pin's out of there. We'll get this out of the way, that's that pin there. This guy slides over, this guy comes back out, and there you have it. So let's set that to the side. All right, so now let's finish up this receiver here. So now all the internals are out except for the trigger and the firing pins themselves. So which will be on this side over here. But first we're gonna go ahead and knock out the trigger. So the first thing we're going to do is punch out this pin. You can see that pin right there. Let's go ahead and knock that out. Just like so that pin came over here so the pin pops out of the bottom there now remember this just like every trigger is under tension so you want to leave that in there to where you can see the orientation of this spring all right so the longer side you can see that that pin sticking out right here this is the other end of the spring this is the long end of the spring and inside there is the short end of the spring so when we get this all the way out you're gonna see a long and a short end short end goes into the trigger Long end goes back and sits right against the receiver facing the trigger guard. Let's go ahead and take that out. So we're gonna pull that out, slide our trigger down and out. And like I said, here, long end of the spring goes towards the receiver, short end goes into the trigger itself, and this sits underneath the receiver, closest to the trigger guard. All right, so we're gonna set those two apart there. All right, so all we have left is the trigger guard and the pins. So there is a screw here, and there is a screw down in, let me get my flashlight, there. Ooh, there it is. So there's a screw inside there that holds the trigger guard on. That's why the trigger guard has to be the last thing to take out because that screw is underneath everything. So we're going to stick the screwdriver down in here, like such. And there's screw one set that to the side flip it over screw two and then do that all right and then this just comes right off like so all right now remember these two different size screws here you have a flatter and a bigger head on the inside smaller on the outside so go ahead and set those aside now we're going to go ahead and start with the firing pins themselves. All right, using a small flathead screwdriver, we're going to start with the 22. Now remember, the 22 is the top, and it is under spring tension. So we're going to use the flathead to take this out. Make sure you're using the right size. The little screws are easy to strip. Take that all the way out. That screw comes out there, and it's a little guy. Set that to the side, and then lift this up, 
and then the spring and the firing pin. And in the same fashion, the 410 is the one on the bottom. Using the same flathead screwdriver, go ahead and take that out. Remember this one is not under spring tension, so if there's not a spring there, that is normal. Take that out. You'll see that that is a slightly bigger screw. So the slightly bigger screw goes to the 410, smaller goes to the 22. Set those to the side, just like you did before. And that is the 410. And there again, this one's a little bit harder to see, but it is bigger. So the biggest thing to remember with these two, because they both have the retention slot, is that the 410, stop this from rolling around here, is bigger than the 22, just so slightly. Okay? And that, my friends, is a complete disassembly of the 24E. All right, let's put this bad boy back together. All right, so now we're gonna start with the reassembly process. We're gonna do it almost in the reverse, exact reverse. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the firing pins in first. I'm gonna start with the 410 on the bottom. Uh, when you put these in, remember that the flat end needs to be facing towards the retention screws. All right, so we're gonna start with the 410 on the bottom going to attempt to no, there's no way I'm going to, be able to put this on film but it goes in the bottom hole get that lined up drop that in there now let me see if I can get it on the flashlight here you can see how that flat end is facing the retention hole or so we're going to take the longer screw because the longer one again is the 410 and we're going to put that into the bottom using our screwdriver here Go ahead and send that in. Making sure that it is giving enough retention, but not enough to impede its ability to go up and down. Now remember, this does not have a spring, so kind of do a push-pull action there, make sure that it doesn't come out. All right. And in the same fashion, we're going to put the 22 in there. However, the 22 has the spring with it. So go ahead and put the spring in the hole first. Drop that down in there. Kind of use a punch to line that up to where it's going to sit and allow the firing pin to go down in there. So springs in there. Now we're going to drop the firing pin down in there. Again, this time making sure that the screw is facing the right way. Go ahead and move that around here to where it is facing the retention screw, just like such. All right, so let's go ahead and get this retention screw started. So we'll flip this around to where you guys can see it a little better. Put that in. Screw that in. Now with the 22, because it's under, it's got a spring in there. You're gonna have to screw this in a little bit to where you can see it. Go ahead and put this in my actual screwdriver here. but it's gonna stop when it hits that pin. So what you wanna do is take your punch and push down on it just slightly to get that retention screw in there. Now there again, you can go all the way down to where it won't move, back it off to where it can actuate. And now that pin is in there like it's supposed to be. All right, so now we're gonna move over and we're this time we're gonna go ahead and put the firing pin in first so that way the trigger guard's not in the way. That's why I said it's kind of in exact order, but slightly different. So with the trigger, like I said before, you got your trigger, you got your spring. Small side goes against the trigger, big side goes against the receiver. All right, so putting those together, line them up, and then get that in there to where this lines up with that hole. Now, you kind of see how it's straight up and down. That's not how it would be in the rifle, or in the gun, shotgun, rifle, it's both. All right, we'll go ahead and put the pin back in there should be almost no pressure until you get to that little divot in there that's going to cause it to to stay so send that in there now your trigger works like it's supposed to so now because of that interior screw we have to put the trigger guard on so trigger guard goes like this go ahead and put your small screw on the outside
go ahead and put that in. Do not send this all the way home because again, you got to be able to, you want to be able to move it. So if you go all the way in, back it up just a little bit. And I'll flip this over. And what I do is I push the trigger back and out of the way and try to drop, I come in with my finger, get my thumb in the way here on the inside and just kind of drop that down in there and then guide it over to the hole using a punch, screwdriver, whatever you got to help move it over. Get it into the hole. Then use your screwdriver and send it home. Just like that. Go ahead and tighten that up. Go ahead and tighten this one up. And your trigger guard is back on. All right, so we're gonna flip this back over the same orientation we had it a minute ago. And this is where the fun starts. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is our barrel catch. We need to put this back in. So setting just like it was. All right, so you, you want the hole to be up and the connector piece to be back in this orientation with the little kickoff here facing down. Put your pin in there. Get it started. And you may have to push down on this because that kind of wants to spread apart like this. So push down once it's in the right position. And then in she goes. Alright, so now make sure that that's got plenty of play. Alright, so what you want to do is you want to put it in like this. However, this side is slightly smaller than the other side. So you're going to flip it over. Flip this over. Put this in. Make sure that the entire piece goes inside there. And you want to play with this until the holes line up. Stick your pin in. It should, again, it should be easy. If you try to do it from the other side, it's going to fight you. So you'll, you'll know that you're going in the, other, the wrong way. So again, you want to line those pins, line the holes up. Stick that down in there. You might have to play with it just a little bit. But again, you shouldn't have to fight it. All right. Once you're in there, like you said, you can push it in there. Now you can feel that it's starting to hit the other side of the frame. That's fine, that's normal. Go ahead and finish it off. Make sure it's flush. Again, use a brass, a brass if I could talk, hammer, so that way you don't mar up the finish on your, on your gun here. And then that actuates like it's supposed to. All right, now that this piece is in here, it's in there good. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the hammer in there. And just like we took it out, it's gonna go in from the top up here. So you're going to go ahead and insert it, if I can put it the right way, make sure the hammer is facing the right direction. Go ahead and insert it in here. Now, we, I, we've been working from this side, but just like with this pin here, we're going to be working from the opposite side here. So you want to make sure that this the hole is going to go in this elbow. Let me zoom in here just a little bit for you. I'll move that into the way here. So you want this elbow right here, that needs to be up and over this hole. So you can kind of see there, you want to put the trigger down line that hole up now you're gonna have a little bit of tension here because of the trigger it's got that spring in there go ahead and put that pin in there work your hammer where that pin goes down in there it shouldn't take any pressure at all just gotta line it up right all right you saw how that goes in there pretty easy now it's stuck on the other side where it's actually a little bit smaller so that way it retains it like it's supposed to so go ahead and put that in there like such and then we can flip it back over all right, now we're gonna put this hammer spring in there. And when you put this in, make sure that the longer side is up, because if you don't, what's gonna happen is this trigger's hammer's gonna be back, excuse me, the hammer's gonna be back all the way. And if you put it in upside down like this, it's gonna put so much tension on the bottom of it that it's not gonna work. So you wanna make sure that the longer end is on top, like such. Now I pulled this back so I gotta clear the hammer, or clear the trigger, and it's gonna go inside here. Now I know I'm going to catch all levels of hell because of what I'm fixing to do, but it's because I don't have any presses or anything like that that I can use that's really adequate for this. So what I do is I put it on the edge of the table, just to where the edge of this is on the table. So basically the, oops, I'm going to get this in here real quick. The edge of this is going to be on the table to where it can also catch this frame. Like I said, I know I'm going to get all kinds of stuff in the comments about how that's not right, how it's not proper. 
but I don't have a bunch of presses, so this is the way that I can do it. This is the way you can do it too. Also, make sure you're using a pretty good sturdy table. Me personally, I'm using. <laughs> I built myself a bench, so uh, you know it, it's going to work pretty good. So I'm going to show you here. Push it back too far. So I'm going to put it on this edge here to show you. I'm going to put it on the edge of the table like this, and I'm going to press in. But I got to go down here to the bottom of this two by six down here on this table but I'm gonna press this in be very careful because there's a lot of tension on this once you get this in here so get it in there you hear it click right so there's a lot of tension underneath there right now so if you can go a little bit lower on the table kind of push it in a little further now push go up underneath the table and push up and it's gonna seat that in the frame now again, I'm sure I'm gonna hear all kinds of crap in the comments about how that wasn't right. It didn't, wasn't supposed to be the way to do it. It's not the proper way to do it. But guess what, guys? It worked. All right. So making sure that this is inside. This should not be impeded here. Your connector piece should not be impeded. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a punch and I'm gonna lightly push this down. Now what's gonna happen is this hole right here is where this is supposed to sit. You can kind of see it on this backside now because we ain't got there yet. Let me bring up my camera or my light. You see that hole? That's the hole we're trying to set it into, okay? So all I'm going to do is take a punch and very gently punch it to where it falls into place. Once it falls into place, you'll know it because it ain't coming out. And again, I'm going to catch all kinds of heck because of the way I'm doing this. But like I said, I don't have a press or anything that can use it to do it. So... the way I can do it so good We're completely seated on both sides you can see now that that's in that hole like it's supposed to be all right and if you look down inside there grab my flashlight again you can see if I can get the line up how that is in that's now in the right spot okay so there's that all right so hammer spring is in all right now we're ready to put in our barrel release lever so first thing I want to do is put the lever itself about halfway in. Don't go all the way in just yet. Now put your coupler. Remember your coupler, the flat end here. This end goes back towards the bender receiver. Stick that inside your coupling here. And get that to fit inside the lever itself. Alright. Now when you're installing that, you want that to go in between the coupler, but you want to make sure that flat end, like I said before, <coughs> excuse me, the flat end before, that's how it attaches, right? So you want to make sure it's like that. So before we get too far though, what we want to do is put in the spring here. So we're going to flip this guy over, making sure it's still there. All right. Now the reason I do this because it is a pain in the tuchus to get this if before you put this cup. If you try to screw this together right now, you're gonna have a pain in the butt getting that on there. So what I do, getting this spring inside here. So this spring, you're gonna see two holes in the back here, right here. You see these? There's one hole and two holes. If I can get you to see it, let me grab my flashlight again. Yeah. There's two holes there. So one, two. All right, so the one on the right side of the, the gun, the rifle, shotgun, whatever, it's very confusing, uh, is where that's gonna go. All right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing this piece right here, just almost, almost to the actual lever. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. All right, that's the way I want it. Now let me see if I can't zoom in here for you. Get it good and zoomed in. Let me line that up for you. All right. So basically what's going to happen is this is going to go in just like this. All right. So this guy goes down. Put that in there. Okay. But you got to line this hole up first with this pin. So you got to put that piece in there and then kind of push back on it and get it to go down and there just like that. If you try to do that before you put that screw in there, there's no way that you're going to get it past this big piece of this coupler so we're going to go ahead and rotate that just a little bit more push that in 
and get that to set right there. So now we're gonna push up on it. Flip this around so you guys can see it. Now I gotta line up my holes here. Oh, I'm fighting this coupler is what I'm fighting. I gotta push that back. And then it snaps in just like that. Okay, if you try to do that by putting this in here, screwing this in, you're never gonna get this piece in there. So now that we have that piece finally in there, all right, we want to go ahead and get our screw. Put our screw in here. Go ahead and put it in like such. Get it started manually. If you have to, you kind of push down on the lever itself. There's a little bit of play in it, not a whole lot. But I get this in manually. And go ahead and get that started. And get that screwing down. Now that should not be in the way. You see how I'm screwing there. If this is in the way, it's not properly aligned. And you have to slide it to the left or to the right to get that to where it sits on the edge of this piece here. But that's how you get that done in there. And then take your screwdriver. Let me go over yep, right here. Finish getting it in. And go ahead and tighten this down. Now, with tightening this down, do not worry about tightening it all the way because there is enough gap. There we go. Enough gap there to be able to play with it. You can kind of see how it goes up and down here. So there's that. All right. Well, you see, I also need to square up my so bust this loose so I got to make sure that this lever is in the middle of my handle here and that these is square with it just like so and then go ahead and tighten that back down all right now it's gonna have a little bit of pressure excuse me it's gonna have a little bit of pressure on this side because we haven't put this second spring in there but that's normal all right so let me zoom back out here. Now we're gonna put that last spring in there. It's last, but it is oh so important. All right, so with this spring, you can kind of see how it's bent just a little bit. Now yours may not be, but mine is bent slightly. So that bend is gonna go inside the receiver, towards the inside of the receiver. There again, this one's kind of a bear because you wanna line it up with that second hole and then get it set in that dimple right there. So it's going to go inside this hole and set in that dimple right there. So here we go. Hardest part is lining that up. Once you line that up, if you keep a four down and back pressure on this, you'll feel it kind of go down up here. And you'll see it start to work its way towards that dimple. Just keep pushing it down until you hear it snap into place and you know it's there. So again, that's kind of a bear with these older models like this, getting these springs in there without some type of a actual press compression is kind of a bear. But you can see now, now I can go either direction and it works. Okay, we want to move that coupler. That's the whole idea. It doesn't matter which way you go, lefty, righty, doesn't matter. All right. The other thing is you can look down here and you can see that that is actuating. Well, if I can sit still, well, you can see it. See how it's moving down? That's what you want to make sure it's doing. Make sure it's moving down all the way out of the way. All right. So that's a little bit of a job, but that is putting the receiver back together on a Savage 24E. All right, guys. Now that we have this receiver completely put back together, like I said, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of you guys that comment about how there's a better way to do that, and I welcome that. I really do. So go ahead and leave your comments below. I appreciate you guys watching all the same. That's how you put that receiver together. So next we got the butt stock, real simple. Just put that in place right there. The grooves pretty much say it for themselves. Just line that up right there. You're gonna take your nice long screw that you got out of it, flathead screw. Just drop that down into this hole, like such. Drop it down in there. Take your really long flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna put this on my knee here. And we're gonna find the groove. That's probably gonna be the hardest part about that is, there we go, finding finding that flathead. All right, once you got that screw in there, find your flathead and start screwing that bad boy down. Go ahead and get it good and tight on there. 
and then your butt stock is back on like so. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, recoil pad on there. That is simple two screws. And these are Phillips heads. So butt stock on like such. Screws are the same. Um, like such. All right, now we are back together like that. Now for the easy part, barrel. All right, and just in case you weren't sure, this groove right here is what connects to the bar inside there. Slide that on, a little bit back pressure, and that's all she wrote. The forearm goes on just as easy. So you got your forearm here, you got your pivot head right here, pivot plate rather. Go ahead and stick that down like such. And you'll see with this one, you see where this kind of grabs on right there, it sits right inside there. That's what you want. You're gonna hit tension right here. That's fine. Grab it, clamp it down, and there you have it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a full disassembly and reassembly of a Savage 24E. Uh, go ahead and make sure it breaks like it's supposed to, it retains like it's supposed to, nice and smooth. Let me go ahead and show you this real quick. Obviously you just saw me put that on there, but there is nothing in either barrel. So, little functions check real quick. Back, fires, back, switch, fire. Beautiful. All right, so she works just like she's supposed to. This was a fun little project. It is a bear once you get to the receiver, but you guys can handle it, have faith in me. I really do. But if you get too aggravated with it, find you a buddy that knows what he's doing follow along this video you'll be all right so dave is going to be glad to get this thing back so he's been waiting on me for a while to get this back to him so i really do appreciate you guys sticking around with me if you're here this far uh do us a favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave your comments down below let me know how you didn't like me putting in that spring or the hammer you know the hammer spring in there like it was that's fine that's all right we'll be glad to hear from you until next time ladies and gentlemen i'm dj hinky with suburban hunt 365 